Well, hi there, and welcome to episode 36 of The Evidence. Hi, this is your buddy Dave over at Mars X3D, and we have some special things to look at today. We're going to start off with something from the archives that I call Quetzal, and you'll see what that's all about in a minute. It's one of my favorites, and I just love it. And then when we find uh, similar items from different missions, that's always an important clue to me. We showed one in a recent episode, and we found another one coming up straight out of Misha Dresik's archives, Star Archives. Boy, if you haven't checked those out, you've got a treat in store for you. Then uh, we're going to continue with uh, the Star Archive and have a look at some very interesting classic views from the surface of Mars and from the moon and, uh, well... You'll see what I mean. The stuff is good. I think you'll like it. Thanks for stopping by and quit talking, Dave. Let's uh, let's roll this thing. This gigapan is loaded with compelling oddities. This initial view, we're looking at the right-hand side of the gigapan near the bottom. If you examine the entire area, it's abundantly clear that these are building remnants, including floors. Uh, balustrades, collapsed ceilings, and more. But our interest lies in the knobbed object lying atop a flat, square piece of stone. When I first zoomed in on this, the first thought that popped into my mind was Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent of the Aztecs, and you find it everywhere in ancient Mesoamerican religious architecture. Look at that snake head! Look at the lavish carving, the polished spine that runs down the side, and even glints in the late afternoon sun. The entire object lies on a flat stone and has a wall or balustrade extending dead straight into the background. And what about that item at the upper left? A buried statue, perhaps? While NASA insists we have overheated imaginations characterized by pareidolia and flights of fancy, we continue to find objects that are clearly manufactured and available for inspection by the average person. So who are you going to believe? NASA or your own cursed eyes? If you've been watching this channel, you know that we posted this particular one a couple episodes ago, Dolman Disaster, with a focus on that uh, almost tombstone-looking uh, type of stone back in the left-hand corner, a dolmen being a megalithic uh, monument type of stone that either marks a religious structure or sometimes a ceremonial spot. In any case, uh, I have seen others of these on Mars, but just recently, I ran across this next one in Misha's Star Archives. And this one is from Misha Dresik's Mars Archive. It's unattributed, but you can see the rather startling similarity to the first dolmen. I'll switch back and forth between the two for you. You'll see what I mean as I switch back and forth between the two. Now, do nearly identical stone shapes occur naturally here on Earth? <laughs> of course they do. Rounded boulders, uh, stalactites, uh, basalt columns, and so forth, they're entirely natural. But I've never seen anything like this on Earth, other than tombstones and similar monuments made by the hand of man. I'll leave it for you to decide. In another classic nugget from the Star Archives, this classic find by Brett Cohen Shepard is from a Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter image. Using available metrics, this saucer or building or giant shiny rock was determined to be some 600 feet across. The entire area is covered with anomalies, but this one really sticks out as something that needs an answer. You know, we've seen evidence of mining operations on the moon, as well as on the several different asteroids we've visited. Now, whether it's us or someone else, somebody has discovered an opportunity to exploit the rich mineral deposits found throughout our solar system. I'm just speculating here, and 
probably irresponsibly so, but when you look down from orbit and see a gigantic machine moving across the surface, leaving a distinctive track to mark its passage, well, that gives me kind of a creepy feeling, especially since we apparently don't have anything like what we see here. And this isn't the only example. There are more images that show odd vehicles working their way across the moon's surface, moving up and down crater walls and leaving distinctive trails in the lunar regolith. Why haven't we been back to the moon in 50 years? Probably because someone has already claimed the mineral rights and they don't much like claim jumpers. Here's another classic from Mises Star Archives. This so-called Data's Head image was taken by one of the astronauts on an Apollo mission, shooting the crater floor and surrounding area with, well, what at the time was a state-of-the-art camera, a Hasselblad with 35 millimeter film. It's pretty tough to imagine them seeing this and other artifacts just lying there and not going over and scooping them up for the return trip to Earth. In any case, this photo has created an ongoing storm of controversy, some proclaiming it fake and others saying it's the real McCoy, or data as the case may be. The smooth humanoid shape with everything in the right place, the distinct red color where the mouth would be, the empty eye sockets, if this is a fake, it's pretty good, especially back in the days before digital photography and Photoshop. Hey, thanks for stopping by today. I really appreciate it. And you know, if you're not viewing these in full X3D, you're really missing the entire purpose of this channel. If you liked what you saw today, please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribing. You know, these videos are not monetized and uh, the only way I know you really like them is if I see a thumbs up. This is your buddy Dave, the Mars X3D. Be well.